Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and we are continuing on in our study of Andrew Murray's book called The Masters in Dwelling. And I've forgotten to say in the last couple videos that um, that book was actually published in 1896. If you've watched any of the video of the holiest of all that I just completed a little while ago, um, that, that book was written in 1894. This one was published in 1896. So uh, I think it's really interesting. I didn't know that when I wanted to, when I just decided to do the uh, Masters in Dwelling following that and not knowing that that was kind of chronological order uh, that God gave him these books. Anyway, we're going to continue on. Uh, this is part two of the self-life. And he starts off in this next section. He says, let us consider, first of all, the nature of this self-life, then denote some of its works, and then ask the question, how may we be delivered from it? Self is the power with, with which God has created and endowed every intelligent creature. Self is the very center of a created being. And why did God give the angels or man a self? The object of this self was that we might bring it as an empty vessel unto God, that he might put it into his life. God gave me the power of self-determination that I might bring this self every day and say, O oh God, work in it. I offer it to thee. God wanted a vessel into which he might pour out his divine fullness of beauty wisdom and power and so he created the world the sun and the moon and the stars the trees and the flowers and the grass which all show forth the riches of his wisdom and beauty and goodness but they do it without knowing what they do then god created the angels with a self and a will to see whether they would come and voluntarily yield themselves to him as vessels for him to fill but alas they did not all do that there was one at the head of a great company, and he began to look upon himself and to think of the wonderful powers with which God had endowed him and to delight in himself. He began to think, must such a being as I always remain dependent on God? He exalted himself. Pride asserted itself in separation from God. And that very moment he became, instead of an angel in heaven, a devil in hell. Self turned to God is the glory of allowing the creature, I'm sorry, the creator to reveal himself in us. Self turned away from God is the very darkness and fire of hell. I know I've said this on previous videos, but that's what I see happen in the garden. A lot of people just think it was about disobedience that God told them, don't eat of this tree and they ate of the tree and that was disobedience and there you go. But it was really more than that. It was about them saying, we don't want you involved in our lives god we can handle life pretty good without you and we don't want we we just want self we want the um you know it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they wanted knowledge of good and evil but apart from god so that's where separation came they basically said we don't need you we can handle things just just fine on our own and so self turned away from God. And he said, that is the very darkness and fire of hell. He said, we all know the terrible story of what took place further. God created man and Satan came in the form of a serpent and tempted Eve with the thought of becoming as God, having an independent self, knowing good and evil. And while he spoke with her, he breathed into her. In those words, the very poison and the very pride of hell. I thought that was a real good visual. You know, Satan's like, he's, he's talking. As he's talking, there's poison entering her system. And not that we'll get off on this, but, you know, that's, that's the power of the spoken word. Right? It says, I think it's Deuteronomy, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Wow, and there you go. There's the connection right there. It will eat its fruit. And Satan spoke death to her. He spoke death and she received death into her very being. He says, his own evil spirit, the very poison of hell, entered humanity. And it is this cursed self that we have inherited from our first parents. It was that self that ruined and brought destruction upon this world. 
and all that there has been of sin and of darkness and of wretchedness and of misery and all that there will be throughout the countless ages of eternity in hell will be nothing but the reign of self, the curse of self, separating man and turning him away from his God. And if we are to fully understand what Christ will, what Christ is to do for us and are to become partakers of a full salvation, we must learn to know and to hate and to give up entirely this cursed self. Now, what are the works of self? I might mention many, but let us take the simplest words that we are continually using. Self-will, self-confidence, self-exaltation. I, I thought that was interesting because the word, just self-confidence, -confid there's been millions of dollars made in seminars and books on how to have self-confidence. And he actually puts it here as a negative. So let's keep an open mind and see if what he says holds true to the scripture. He says, self-will, pleasing self, is the great sin of man, and it is at the root of all that compromising with the world, which is the ruin, it is, okay, let me, let me refer, let me go back. Self-will, pleasing self, is the great sin of man, and it is at the root of all that compromising with the world, which is the ruin of so many. Men cannot understand why they should not please themselves and do their own will. Numbers of Christians have never gotten hold of the idea that a Christian is a man who is never to seek his own will, but is always to seek the will of God as a man in whom the very Spirit of Christ lives. Lo, I come to do thy will, O my God. He's quoting what Jesus quoted from, I believe it was Isaiah, who was of course, prophesying what the Messiah would say. We find Christians pleasing themselves in a thousand ways and yet trying to be happy and good and useful. And they do not know that at the root of it all is self-will robbing them of the blessing. Christ said to Peter, Peter, deny thyself. But instead of doing that, Peter said, I will deny my Lord and not myself. He never said it in words, but Christ said to him in the last night, Thou shalt deny me, and he did it. What was the cause of this? Self-pleasing. He became afraid when the woman servant charged him with belonging to Jesus and three times said, I know not this man. I have nothing to do with him. He denied Christ. Just think of it. No wonder Peter wept those bitter tears. It was a choice between self, that ugly, cursed self, and that beautiful, blessed Son of God. And Peter chose self. No wonder that he thought, instead of denying myself, I have denied Jesus. What a choice I have made. No wonder he wept that bitterly. Christians, look at your own lives in the light of the words of Jesus. Do you find there self-will, self-pleasing? Remember this, every time you please yourself, you deny Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Remember this, every time you please yourself, you deny Jesus. It is one of the two. You must please him only and deny self, or you must please yourself and deny him. Then follow self-confidence, self-trust, self-effort, self-dependence. What was it that led Peter to deny Jesus? Christ had warned him. Why did he not take warning? Self-confidence. He was so sure. Lord, I love thee. For three years I have followed thee. Lord, I deny that it ever can be. I am ready to go to prison and to death. So he was self-confident. That's the problem with self-confidence is when you have confidence in yourself. We said in the last video that Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So where does self-confidence come from? Doesn't sound like it comes from God. It sounds like it comes from yourself or the world or people propping you up, but it certainly doesn't come from God. He said it was simply self-confidence. People have often asked me, what is the reason I fail? I desire so earnestly and pray so fervently to live in God's will. And my answer generally is 
simply because you trust yourself. They answer me, no, I do not do that. I know I'm not good, and I know that God is willing to keep me, and I put my trust in Jesus. But I reply, no, my brother, no. If you trusted God and Jesus, you could not fail. But you trust yourself. Do not let us believe that the cause of every fail in the Christian life is nothing but this. I trust this cursed self instead of trusting Jesus. I trust my own strength instead of the almighty strength of God. And that is why Christ says, this self must be denied. Okay, well, we're going to stop there today. We'll continue on next time. But before I go, I wanted to remind you about the, I'm going to be putting a link in the description about the movie The Sound of Freedom that will be opening in theaters um, July 4th. And if you have not heard about this movie, um, I'll just put it simply, it's about a true story of Tim Ballard, who used to be a Homeland Security pedophile uh, he, he would go after pedophiles and, and have them arrested. And God opened up for him to start rescuing the children because even though the pedophiles were being put in jail, the children were still in being trafficked. And so this movie is showing what can be done. And he really, a, a, a friend just sent me a video today about Tim Ballard. He's speaking and he was totally led of God and his wife I didn't realize they had nine, they have nine children. And she was like, you need to go rescue these children. Not knowing he was going into a war zone and her not knowing like the outcome of this, but God was telling her he needs to go. And he resonated with that. And it's just incredible. You'll watch this movie and you'll be ready to strap on a backpack and, and go do something. But in the link, um, in that trailer, there's a message from Jim Caviezel telling you how you can get involved. they got crowdfunding going on. They really want to make a big splash at the theater. Um, they have worked for five years to get this to the theater because it's not a topic that uh, a lot of people want to address, but it has to be addressed, and we must do what we can to eradicate this scourge from off the earth. So I hope you'll tune into that and be led of the Lord to do whatever you can do. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time. God bless.